Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're going to have a uh, short webinar on our series today related to the FPG call center solution. Uh, it will be about a little bit over half an hour, and uh, there will be a Q&A after that. And uh, obviously, uh, you can follow up with us later on at sales at FPG.com or uh, my email, mario.cuello at FPG.com to follow through any other questions that you may have. Uh, we're just going to cover the call center uh, from a top level. We're not going to drill into the details of configuration or or uh, usage, um, but I uh, just want to give you a perspective on what we have and uh, the idea is to stimulate your interest. And if you have an opportunity with a customer that you want to pursue and you have questions, we'll definitely will help you uh, dimension that. So um, not to waste any time, we're going to start right now. All right, uh, just a, a quick slide, uh, only one on FPG. We're an American company. We've been around for 22 years. We're about 30 employees, uh, offices in Orlando, Dallas, and Yerevan. Uh, we've been shipping initially PBX and gateway appliances since the year 2000. And we started our cloud services in 2000. And uh, let's see, uh, about four years ago. Uh, essentially with two products, our APG EC QX PVX, uh, Cloud PVX, and then our EC mount monitoring tool. So we have other presentations. We have covered this. should be on our YouTube channel soon. You can uh, uh, go through those to be able to get details of that. We focus on, you know, small to medium business, uh, enterprises, uh, contact centers, hospitality, health, educational institutions, government, and multi-site. So, the several verticals that the product can be applied to with certain functionality specific to that. And if you're in any of those sectors, uh, certainly let us know if you have any questions. And our philosophy is pretty much service. Uh, you know, we feel that uh, we need to provide good service to you in order for you to be able to deploy, configure, support these products. And uh, so it's not just you reading on a manual. So we, we have a very good tech support. Uh, and we assist you in being successful with your customers. Okay, so why don't we have, uh, what is FPG solution for call centers? Uh, it's essentially available, uh, it's a suite of functionalities available on our QX, IPC, VX appliance and in our um, cloud ECQX, VX. Uh, you can use it for a small call center within an enterprise, which have customers that do that, or it can be a dedicated call center. Most of our uh, applications or use of what our product has been larger dedicated call centers. But in any case, it can be both. Um, right now, we have four software license items that are part of the call center suite. Uh, one of them is automatic call distribution, um, which essentially is the module that allows you to create the queues or the groups for the call center, for example, sales and marketing queue uh, or support, uh, have uh, extensions dedicated as agents, assign those agents uh, to those queues, and then manage the distribution of inbound calls. Uh, that is the ACD module. In this particular case, um, you pretty much uh, configure everything on the QX, PBX, and then you use a keypad. The agents use a keypad to be able to log in and log out. Uh, of a queue and be able to start, stop receiving uh, queue calls. I'll have a little more on SCD later on. The other module is the FPG ACD console, EAC. This is a, a web-based tool that uh, is complementary to ACD and essentially gives you a visual a GUI interface uh, for the agents and the supervisors to manage the call center. Okay, uh, it is not, uh, a requirement to do call distribution, but uh, it is uh, highly recommendable because it, it, you, you have uh, or highly recommended because you get statistics and a lot of information uh, for managing the call center. Uh, the other tool that we have, the other two are essentially for outbound calls or outbound campaigns. Uh, so if you want to do outbound calls, uh, both the AOC and the auto dialer are tools that allow you to import a, a list of of uh, uh, numbers, and then the AOC actually uh, would uh, just make outbound calls on designated times and connect those 
outbound destinations with three agents on a high priority queue, while the uh, auto dialer uh, uses the IVR uh, and allows the the person receiving the call to navigate the IVR. So uh, we'll we'll have a little more detail later on on these. But essentially, these are four licenses that we have uh, to activate the the call center functionality, and they're available in all the QX appliances except for the QX20, uh, our smallest PVX. It doesn't allow any of these call center licenses to be active. Uh, and also, obviously, on the cloud PCQX product. Now, there's some other functionalities that are applicable in many cases to call centers. Uh, one of them is call recording. We do have as a separate uh, activation for you to record calls from agents and, uh, you know, have them uh, archived for uh, future reference. You can do that. We have an option for barge in that will let um, essentially a supervisor uh, uh, barge in into uh, uh, an agent call with a customer and uh, either as a whisper mode where the supervisor can whisper to the agent that the uh, customer does not hear for coaching purposes or in a three-way call where everybody can talk to each other or in a listen mode only where the supervisor can hear the agent with a customer uh, discussion and uh, uh, but he won't be able to talk to them uh, and contribute so Bajen, uh is uh, very popular especially when you have supervisors managing um, large number of agents. We also have a third party call control, which is essentially activating our API for you having third party software to control the PBX. Uh, now, that is not uh, a typical thing uh, that, you know, call centers use, but in any case, it's available if you have some sort of uh, uh, a special dialer that you want to use that you wrote software on and you want to. Uh, use that to control uh, outbound calls uh, or uh, through the PBX, you can certainly do that. So we do have an API for controlling the PBX. Uh, we have also uh, system redundancy, uh, not necessarily tied up to call center, but what it does is that it gives you, uh, for a large call center, uh, ability to have a redundant system. And in case a primary system fails, then um, you will be able to have a redundant unit take over the functionality right away and uh, and essentially you, you don't have any downtime, okay? All right. Uh, the other one is uh, CRM integration. If you want to integrate to a CRM uh, like VTiger, Salesforce, and we recently have uh, introduced uh, Zoho uh, into the software package, you can certainly do that. Uh, we also have direct connection to MS Teams if you want to uh, connect MS Teams users to um, extensions on the PBX or actually have MS Teams users use the trunks uh, assigned to the PBX, we have that uh, available. In this case, no license is required to activate that from our end. Uh, we also have a WebRTC server on the high-end PBX, the 3000 and the 5000, where um, we do uh, essentially allow you uh, or handle WebRTC uh, calls that are uh, coming from browsers to come into the PBX and terminate on the PBX, whatever you like, whether it's an IVR or any extension. So uh, we also had that available on the uh, cloud product. So what it does is it allows you to have on your website uh, buttons on the website where customers can click to dial uh, and through the WebRTC interface av available on the browsers. Now, obviously, they need to have on their PC or their laptop, microphone, and speaker. They can actually uh, send a call to a sales team uh, and then talk to them and uh, and essentially uh, uh, get serviced without having to dial on their phone. Uh, so it's similar to what you see uh, on a chat uh, window on websites um, that you chat with the team. Uh, you can do this, but in this case, it will be a voice call. Uh, and finally, we have uh, Chrome Click to Dial, where it's uh, an add-on to the Chrome browser 
uh, that uh, is connected to your extension. And what it does is that as you open pages on your browser and you navigate with your mouse and you hover over a phone number, a small pop-up window will show and allow you to click to dial and place a call to that number and tie that call to your extension. So it's a it's sort of a speed dial uh, or a click to dial um, for any page open on your Chrome browser. And then for that, you don't need a license for that. Same thing with the WebRTC. So some of these are license items, uh, others are free, but they're essentially uh, complementary for a call center uh, functionality. And you can pick and choose what you need based on your customer's needs. Now we do have an EPG soft phone uh, EPG, as far as a desk hard phone, does not make phones, but we auto configure most brands and models active on the market today, which is a big advantage of EPG over some of the other solutions on the market. But we do have a soft phone uh, that is our own, and it works very well with our cloud and on-prem devices. Uh, essentially, it has all the functions that a soft phone needs. Uh, you know, you can handle your uh, call history, directories, you can also retrieve your voicemails, and it, is, it works for uh, Android, uh, Apple, iPhone, and Windows. Uh, you download from the stores the application, or you get it for Windows from our portal, and then uh, you configure, in the case of the appliances, you activate a license. In the case of the cloud service, it comes with the cloud service that we offer today. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can do presence, and you can also do instant messaging with other equal participants. Uh, you can have multiple SIP accounts and multiple line appearances on each SIP account, so it makes it very flexible uh, for you if you want to receive calls from different uh, SIP accounts. Uh, you can load up your own logo if you want to do that to your customer, give it some personalization of your service with your customer, you can load up your own logo. And uh, it does have 20 programmable keys, uh, and uh, similar to BLF keys on a phone. Uh, on the right picture here, you see uh, an example of some of those. Some of uh, some of them are for opening up our, an audio conference uh, or or doing a uh, speed dial destination numbers, uh, park extensions and retrieve uh, park calls. Uh, you can do, uh, retrieve, uh, voicemails. Like if you have a, a shared voicemail box, uh, for example, it comes in on sales, uh, shared voicemail. Anybody will see this button. It's lit up. You got voicemails in there. You can pick up, uh, or you can do uh, date night, uh, shifting of calls. If you want to use, uh, during the day receptionist and at night go to IVR or voicemail, you can use a button to switch that back and forth. So in essence, pretty much all of the functions that you can do on a desk phone BLF, you're gonna be able to do on this 20 keys on the e-call uh, e uh, MPK. We call them MPK on the e-call. All right. Uh, here's just a, a one slide showing a, an example uh, of the capacity of the uh, top three PBX appliances, the 500 all the way to the 5,000. Uh, you can see the, the number of base uh, extensions that come with it and the maximum they can grow to. And then the concurrent capacity of calls, as you can see uh, between the 3,000, 5,000, you have a large capacity of concurrent calls to the outside. Uh, the maximum capacity of call recording ports same thing with audio conference ports, simultaneous audio conference uh, ports. It doesn't have to be on one conference. It could be obviously many, uh, many conference rooms. Um, how many edges can be simultaneously logged in as well as uh, phone BLF subscriptions and if they do have WebRTC or not. You can see the 500 and below do not have the WebRTC server, but the 5,000 and the 3,000 do. Uh, these capacities are Assuming there's no mix, once you start mixing, uh, you know, call recording with EAC agents, the capacities are diminished because it pretty much uh, there's a mix of CPU utilization. Now we do have a table in our portal that gives you an idea about that. But what we want to illustrate here is that with these appliances, you have a very large um, capability for uh, a larger type call center. 
All right, so let's talk a little more detail about some of these functions. Uh, ACD management, uh, or pretty much how do you handle the ACD, uh, some of the calls. Uh, in, in our case, you can receive calls to the call center using, using the auto attendant. You know, for example, uh, press one for sales, uh, two for marketing, three for support, and then go to a queue. Uh, or you can have direct DID numbers assigned to different queues. Or you can call, you know, send a call to a receptionist and, you know, when they say, I want to go to sales, she forwards the call to the, to the, uh, queue for sales, for example. And then, of course, any agent available there would take care of that call. Or you can use a web RTC I mentioned before. So there are many ways to uh, handle inbound calling, uh, before you send them to the queue. And as far as the agents are concerned, uh, uh, you know, the agents, uh, when they're logged in, they're going to be able to receive calls from the queues, uh, as well as or to their extension, as well as making any kind of direct inbound or outbound call to their extension. I mean, their extension is still used uh, normally as they would. They just, they're just going to be able to get incoming calls from the queues. Uh, and of course they log in, log out to activate or deactivate, uh, getting the calls from the queue. We also have on the EAC console different statuses like present status uh, that the agent can also use uh, with pretty much the same effect. I mean, if you're on lunch, you won't be able to get any calls during that time. Uh, you can be local inside the office uh, in the on-prem, or you can be remote, and obviously on the cloud, you can be anywhere. But but idea is that you, if you have agents that are working from home and you're using the on-premise product, you can do that. Uh, you know, they can have access to EAC. You just have to open up ports in your router between the PBX and the agent at home to be able to get to the EAC console. But you can certainly do that, or you can even send uh, calls to agents to their mobile device, okay? And then agents can be belong to one or more queues. You may have a, a superstar agent that can do sales and marketing and support. You can He can belong to all of the queues. Uh, at the same time, so whatever you choose. All right, here's just an illustration about how calls coming in. Uh, as you can see, we have a 200 here with two different trunks. We got PSTN trunks, and we got SIP trunks through an ITSP, and we got customers A, B, C, D, and E coming in, making calls. It goes to an IVR in this case, and then there are three different queues. Uh, the customers are going to press one, two, or three to be able to go to sales, marketing, or TSS uh, support, and uh, and essentially uh, get into the queue. And then eventually, agents, you know, Sam, Mark, Monica, A, Jane, are assigned to those queues when they're logged in, answer the call. So very simple, very straightforward illustration of how you can do using an IVR. Now for the ACD. Uh, activation license, the one that I mentioned to you that is a basic license that you need to have uh, in order to create the queues and assign agents to the queues. Uh, essentially, it does not require the console. You don't need to have that. That's optional. <clears throat> but the EAC is, is uh, recommended because it provides you all of the, all of the reports. So uh, on ACD, uh, they log the agents log in, log out with a keypad using star 83, or you can have a program button, as I was showing earlier on the BLF, to be able to activate uh, their login uh, or deactivate. And then we do uh, different call distribution types. So you define that uh, for the agent. Uh, you know, it could be a call coming in. All of the agents are going to ring. The first one answering the call gets that call from the queue. You can do a round robin, you know, where you actually uh, uh, sequentially uh, ring to agents. If they don't answer, it goes to the next one. Uh, you can go uh, longest idle. Uh, so the agent that hasn't had a call for the longest time is the one that is going to get the next call. Uh, or uh, a random hunting, in this case, it will be random. Or skill level, and, you know, you define uh, on agents, different skill levels. Let's say uh, agents have a skill of 10 uh, numerical value and others have a skill of eight or nine. And what it does is that uh, a call comes in and based on the, um, based on the uh, skill level, the highest skill level agent available, 
is going to give uh, the inbound call to that agent. So that is what is called skills-based. So several different options, how you want to distribute the inbound calls on the queue to uh, free agents. Now, how we handle the caller and the queue, there are several options in here. Uh, obviously, uh, callers coming in and uh, we play a welcome message where they're on the queue. Uh, let's say, you know, welcome to FPG. Uh, someone will be with you on sales in a minute, for example, which you can actually mix with music on hold. Uh, it could be music or messages, uh, a playlist that you can load up on the QX, a combination of some tunes with some messages uh, in addition to uh, a repeating queue message. So uh, plenty of uh, flexibility on you. How do you want to combine what the, what the caller is going to be hearing while they are in the queue? Now, at the same time, there are uh, means for you to manage how the callee or the caller is uh, supported on the queue. You could, you could have a timeout where the caller stays there for too long. You can send them to uh, certain extensions. Uh, or you can do uh, play a message uh, that uh, what is their, their number on the queue or what is their estimated time on the queue, uh, okay, so that they have an idea how long they're going to be holding off. Or you can uh, allow them to do a zero out where they press zero on the keypad and you redirect them to uh, some other extensions. Or they can have the option to... Uh, opt out and then get called when they're free. So, you know, they hang up uh, and then they can, they will receive a call from an agent uh, when the agent is free. So a few different options in how you manage uh, what the callers see when they are and, and, and they can do when they're on the queue. All right. The ACD console is, uh, the web-based application I mentioned to you. So you actually don't, it's, it, there's no application installed on Windows. You just web access to the PBX to a special uh, section with your own credentials as an agent. And when you log in, uh, you have a lot of options in there. Uh, and it's both for agents and supervisors. So it is a, it, it gives you a dashboard and a queue panel uh, pretty much intended for displaying on a big screen on a call center. Uh, you know, the dashboard uh, will show a lot of real time and uh, statistical information for everyone to see, while the Q panel uh, will do a similar thing, but pretty much will show all the agents. So this is pretty much the display that uh, call centers uh, will certainly have. Uh, on a big room, or uh, it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, uh, an agent or a supervisor can see the same thing. Uh, so you can uh, manage uh, uh, the uh, agent statuses, uh, the handling of the calls. You can block agents from receiving calls. Uh, you can see uh, what what agents are having what call. All of the statistical information related to the status of the agents, uh, time on the call, you know, uh, how much time the average have on the, on the call, uh, how much time the calls are being on a queue, uh, average time for answering the call, average time of the call, and so forth. All of this information is available on the EAC. And, and again, the supervisor can see it for all the agents, and the agents can see it for themselves and for their queue, okay? So there are different options what you can see there. Uh, you can also, if you have barge in, you can also... The supervisor through the screen can barge in on a call uh, just by looking at the agents on the list. I said, I want to barge in on this particular call right now and see what's going on. You can do that. Uh, and we do have uh, a lot of reports that are visible on the screen on the GUI, but we have many of them that are downloadable. So most of them are downloadable on CSV file and then you can open them on excel for manipulation later on okay so they're predetermined um uh reports and we actually have a list of these reports on the document in our portal uh and usually we keep on adding some new ones as some people ask us to do so there are plenty available there but if there's something that you may need that we don't have let us know and uh, we'll be happy to look into that you also have a, a, a means to chat with other agents. So there's a chat tool in EAC. 
uh, to be able to, you know, share information. Um, and also, uh, you can do closure codes. Uh, not used too much, but what it does is essentially when you finish up a call as an agent, you can look at the call record there and you can put in either a pre-selected uh, closure code like uh, to be called, uh, check back, not interested, whatever, or you can freehand some comments. And the system will let you have so many seconds that you program for you to be able, once you hang up the call, go to that record and then enter that information before you can ring again with a new call from the uh, from the queue. Okay, so that is called uh, closure codes. Uh, all right. And finally, there's a scrolling message like we call our marquee. So it's like the, you know, the, the ticker in, in Times Square where on the top of the screen, the supervisor can put in messages that are intended for everyone. Uh, you know, we'll be closing in 10 minutes. Uh, uh, we have an offer right now of 5% off to for everyone. Any kind of message that you want to scroll on the screen for the agents to see uh, by a supervisor, uh, we have that capability. All right. Here are some, a couple of screenshots. Uh, and we do have, if you want to get a demo of this, uh, we can do it uh, with our support team uh, with a live uh, call generator that will give you the ability to uh, see how the calls are handled and the queues and all that. Or if you want to try it yourself, we certainly can give you a test license. But what we see here is uh, on the queue pane or the queue uh, window, uh, you see the, uh, the partic this particular queue is uh, test two. And you have different colors showing uh, active real-time info as well as uh, time uh, span information, the ones on the bottom, you know, answer calls, total calls, abandoned calls, rejected within a time span. In this particular case, the time span selected was today, for example. Okay, so uh, the, the pane in the bottom is the, the what we call the queue panel. Uh, that one will show all of the agents assigned to the queues. In this case here, there are four queues, test one, two, three, and test queue harant. And you can pick and choose the ones you want to show. But once you select that, it would show you all of the agents on that queue. And then there's different colors for the status that they're in. Okay, so um, uh, it's just a different uh, type of dashboard. All right. This one here, uh, we're showing the uh, main dashboard in the top. Uh, here, there is a, uh, uh, the time frame that we're showing for this stats is today. And these are all different percentages uh, and statistics that are typical for call centers. I'm not, I'm not gonna go through them in detail, but you can pick and choose what you wanna show here. You can pick the interval uh, level for, for doing this statistics. Okay, whether well, it's, you know, 50 seconds, 100 seconds, three minutes, whatever. And then the time frame for doing the calculation. So uh, very real time. This is usually what uh, supervisors and call centers may be looking for. Uh, for example, they, they want to make sure calls don't get on a queue more than a certain amount of time. Uh, and then they use the statistics and this information to be able to go and fine tune uh, the uh, services that they offer. And then the bottom pane is just showing uh, the reporting uh, tab, and there you see uh, some of the different uh, uh, reports that are available, and you can actually download this by hand, a CSV, or you can schedule this to be downloaded at a certain date and time uh, and send over to an external FTP, and then you can manage that uh, later. I believe we can send them as an email too. I'm not sure about that, but I think we can do that too. All right. Okay, automatic outbound calling. Uh, AOC is one of the two outbound call tools. By the way, everything I talked up until now for the ACD is for inbound calls, you know, inbound call center. But if you want to do any outbound call center functionality, we have the AOC and the auto dialer. Now, the AOC is also a web-based application. It is uh, similar to you go into the PBX, and you log in to a different window than the uh, window of EAC and uh, with your credentials, and then it will let you create outbound call campaigns, one or many, 
load up a call list for uh, sending to that or activating that call campaign. And then what it does is that when you trigger it for it to activate, it will start calling these numbers, okay? And then uh, once the person asks, uh, then it will connect that person to a high priority queue on your ACD. So the high priority queue has precedence of any of the other queues. And that way uh, you can, and you can certainly have agents that belong to the outbound call center high priority queue or to the inbound, but most of the people probably had just dedicated agents to the outbound call center and would essentially connect the call to the agent so that they would do their part. Now, you know, telemarketing or or some sort of sales marketing type campaigns. Uh, another one could be, uh, I don't know, we talk about uh, doctors uh, also, but actually doctors are better on the next one, on the next slide. But at the end of the day is for being able to do outbound campaigns by inputting a series of numbers you want to call in into the AOC tool, okay? And of course, if you have uh, options where we try to make a call and no, it, there's no answer, you can try to do the call again, all right? And you can have more than one uh, campaign at a time. All right, the last item we have here is the auto dialer. And this is uh, a Windows-based application it is not, a, uh, you know, web GUI. So you install the app on Windows connected to your PBX. And it's a little bit different than the AOC. In this particular case, what you do is that you still input a set of numbers uh, from an Excel a CSV file into the auto dialer, similar to AOC. But then you configure an IBR. So what it does is that it calls out uh, these numbers and then place uh, an IVR that you configure to the customer. Uh, and then the customer can select options, uh, pressing buttons on the key, and then you can navigate that IVR or you eventually can distribute the call to uh, 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 destination numbers. Now, any IVR could do that. But the important thing here is that the the key pressed by the customer is recorded back in your call list. So an example is a doctor's office that would like to uh, confirm appointments for the next day. So instead of receptionist uh, dialing in all these numbers and to confirm the um, the uh, the visit, uh, the auto dialer can dial out the numbers, play the message, uh, call from doctor such and such, press one for important message. Then it can say, uh, you have an appointment tomorrow at 5 p.m. It can tell you that from the reading from the text, text to speech, right? And then confirm if you want to show up uh, pressing one or reject it, uh, press two, or if you want to reschedule, press three. And depending if they press one or two, that result is going to go back to the call list. And if they press three, obviously it's going to go to a receptionist to reschedule. So once I can, once you finish up that campaign, then you look at the CDR and you can see whether they're coming, uh, they confirmed it or not. Now, a lot of doctors have, uh, SMS that can do that today. Uh, we certainly can do that. But in this particular case, uh, it is a phone call. Okay. So um, it's essentially an outbound uh, uh, type of campaign uh, capability uh, using the uh, PBX. All right. This is our last slide, MPG competitive advantages. So uh, it's just a sort of a summary what our claim to fame is going to be. Uh, essentially, everything is done by FPG in-house. We, we don't use any open source. Uh, asterisk engine or anything similar to that is all done by us and is well polished over all, all these years in business. Uh, we have a lot of experience with PBX and gateways, uh, with a on-premise line of products that we have applied the same expertise into the cloud product. Uh, excellent, uh, technical support and, and good training, uh, modules that we have. They, uh, as a matter of fact, tomorrow we're going to have a training on the call center. Uh, functionality and it's going to have that at 11. If you haven't subscribed in our portal, please do so. And uh, it will be very, uh, uh, a lot of information for you on the call center topics. Integration with many phone vendors, 
and models, as I mentioned before. Uh, you can pretty much use any SIP from provider that you like. Many of them we have on a wizard. Uh, no long-term contracts when you're using our cloud product. It is on a month-to-month -month basis. No set of fees, no hidden cost. Okay. By the way, the pricing is very competitive. And then, of course, you can, with us, same GUI. Once you learn how to use the GUI on the on-prem, it's the same as on the cloud. So same uh, configuration applies to both products if you want to have a mix on those. And then finally, uh, uh, here is a uh, contact information. So also at FEGCOM, we're on social media, uh, our website. If you want to do an online EAC demo, let us know. and We'll be happy to do that for you. It will give you a good uh, visibility of how the tool works. Okay. So at this time, I am going to 